knows the answer without making me feel like shit. Yeah. Why didn't you cast me? I mean, when you first wrote it, you wrote it for me. Okay, so that's what this whole thing has been about tonight. No. It feels like it. It's not. It's just that as I was sitting in the audience watching the film, a lot of it was true. A lot of it. Whether you want to admit it or not. And it's hard to explain how strange it is to see things that happen to you play out in a work of fiction. To have a whole audience laugh and gasp and experience your experience with another person playing lead. It isn't just your experience, Marie. It happened to both of us. I was with you when you overdosed. We were together in that market in Chinatown. It doesn't just belong to you. It belongs to everybody that watched it happen. That's not even the fucking point. No, nah, you say that. It's not. And that's not even what I was trying to say. Okay, so what were you trying to say, Marie? <laughs> That at some point, this was something that you and I were doing together. And I don't know what happened. I don't know what changed. All I know is I was sitting there watching the film thinking to myself, wow. I didn't mean to give all of that away. I don't want to get into the reasons why you cast Taylor. It's just that you fight for everything. You fought for this film, you fought for it to be made this way, but why didn't you fight for me? Because I would have been good. I would have, if not better. So there it is. What? The fucking truth. I mean, leave it up to you to burn the entire fucking night to the ground. Only to reveal it's because you're jealous. Of course you are, Marie. The feeling that I have is not pain at all. It's deeper than that. It's sadder than that. It's loss. It's mourning. It's the knowledge that I can no longer tell my story. I can't articulate the chaos that goes on in here because you hold it already. Taylor told it already. Yes, I know it's not solely mine. We both experienced, but the difference is you were able to process it. You were able to take something dark and turn it into something good that is moved by people. I can't do that. I'm stuck with you. Yeah. I just wish that this was something that you and I could have done together. And to be brutally honest, I would have been better because it's my life, my experience, and I would have even made your film better. But you gave up acting, Marie. And when I finally got the film financed, I asked you to audition. You say yes, but you are reluctant. You used to be able to blame the material. The writer sucks, the director sucks, they want this type of girl or that type of girl. But for the very first time, there was a role that was perfect. And it was because it was so close to you. And your only excuse is yourself. And you didn't even try. That's the harsh reality of all of this. The same instinct that exists in Imani, in you, to do drugs and self-sabotage, that didn't go away. If you weren't brilliant, you would be a cliche. You would be another pretty girl who wasted her 20s away because she was too proud to commit. Too good to do the hard work. Too cool 
to do something beneath her. But guess what? The city is littered with people like you. The difference is you actually have a talent that's unique and rare. But guess what? There's nothing more pathetic than wasted talent. I didn't try because you didn't want me. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay, so now you want to play the victim role, right? Now you want to say, uh, you didn't try because you felt like I didn't want you. You are fucking intolerable. <laughs> you are an egotistical, narcissistic, lying sack of fucking shit. You didn't want me. Because if you did, you knew you would have to share center stage and you wouldn't be the sole author of this film. And its lineage would extend beyond you and your brilliance. And you knew that I would say, this shit happened to me. It's real. And then suddenly people would have been asking, who's the one with the talent? Him or her? Huh? If that's the story you need to tell yourself, Marie, be my guest. Oh, it's about ownership. Okay? It's the fact that you want to create some fucking illusion that filmmaking isn't a collaborative effort and it's about you and only you and everybody else is following your orders. But let me tell you, if they knew it was me that made your shit authentic, you wouldn't be able to swing your dick. And that's why you didn't cast me. That's why you didn't thank me, Malcolm. Oh, okay. So authentic, huh? Yep. Oh, isn't yes. that the fucking word of the day? Well, I think authenticity is fucking key. Well, of course you do, because that's all you have to offer. That's why everybody always talking this authentic shit today. Because that's the only word that makes people who don't know shit feel like they have something to offer. We don't know or care about film anymore. We ain't got shit to say about film. But we love talking about some authentic authenticity, don't we? Yeah. We don't know dick dilly shit squat about fucking film, about Citizens Kane, about the best years of our life, but what's authentic? Yeah, we know that shit through and through, don't we? <laughs> Your authenticity doesn't matter. Your experience doesn't matter. The recreation of reality is not what makes something interesting. It's about your interpretation of reality, what you have to say about reality, or what you can reveal about reality. It's about perception, your perception, not transcribing a conversation, setting up a camera, and hit record. That's a YouTube video, a confessional, a memoir, a story we have heard a thousand times before. Your experience doesn't matter. Your life, your struggle doesn't matter. You being an addict, boring. You overdosing, not interesting. It's about transferring an emotional moment into something symptomatic and moving. Good luck, Marie. Fuck you. No, fuck you. I fucking hate you. No, I hate so you much. more. I hate I you. I hate you so no, much. I fucking hate you. <laughs> I hate you! I hate you!